These notes are on parametric equations. Um, parametric equations are kind of neat. Um, what we're doing is we start with a particular t value and we plug that into two separate functions, an x function and a y function, so that a given t value gives us an x and a y, meaning an x and a y coordinate. So um, if I make a table of values, x and y, um, and I'll start negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Plugging in negative 3 to x gives me negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, 2, 5, 8, 11. Plugging um, negative 3, so forth, into the y function gives me 9, 5, 1, negative 3, negative 7, negative 11, negative 15. So what would be really nice here is to actually now have a function that is the xy function, and f of x equals et cetera. So um, in class, you played with this quite a bit, and you saw that there were some patterns with these, which was that um, if we look here, my slope here, my change, sorry, my m of our x function is 3, and our m of our y function is negative 4. And so it turns out that our slope of our f of x is negative 4 over 3. So in order to get a new function, f of x, I need to look at the two slopes, my x slope and my y slope. And so I can start to write that now. I have negative 4 over 3 my slope. It also turns out that the 2 and the negative 3 here actually appear in our table. And they appear right here as a point. And so it means that I have a point and the point will be the b of the x function and the b of the y function. So my point here is 2, negative 3. And so I can write the function um, of, in terms of x and y from a parametric function where both the x and the y are linear by looking at the slopes and looking at the points given, the y-intercepts. Now, um, this gets to be in some ways a little more fun once we move away from linear functions. And so let's look at an example of a non we don't have two linear functions. So I have x of t equals t squared minus 4, and y of t equals 3t plus 4, and I want to get an x and comma y. So again, I'm going to make a table of values. x, y, t, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Give me a nice... Um, broad range of numbers. Um, I plug these values in and I get a nice parabola shape. We can see our vertex there at 0, negative 4. My y's, I get negative 5, negative 2, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. And then I can graph this. And I notice with this graph that um, my x's kind of start repeating themselves, which makes sense in terms of this is a parabola. And so um, I'm going to go out to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4 is my smallest. And at negative 4, I'm at positive 4. So um, I'm going to count by 2's here. Um, and at positive 5, I'm at negative 5, so 4, negative 5. Um, but at 5, I'm also at 13. So I'm going to get, looks like, a sideways parabola. So um, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Um, at 0, I'm both at negative 2 and positive 10. 6, 8, 10. Um, at um, negative 3, I am both at 1 and, sorry, negative 3, I'm both at 1 and at 7, 4, 6, 7. And there's my lovely shape. 
And because I know that this is a square root function, I now can look at the vertex and look at some of the patterns here and sort of work on figuring out what the function would be if I wanted to write it in function notation. Um, but I think that the beauty in this is seeing that taking uh, one value for t and plugging it into an x and a y function gives you this whole new function that is, is quite interesting to see.